presented by Bud Light. Hey, and stay tuned to the horn for your chance to be my baseball bud. You can win some tickets to come to the game with me. Whatever you're doing in Central Texas, do it with an ice cold Bud Light. Famous among friends. Right-hander Jake Buchanan's fate has improved markedly. He had a 1-0 lead into the second inning. Now he has a 3-0 lead. You look at 6, 7, and 8, Guzman, Beck, and Hayes. 12.50 pregame, 105 first pitch, H-E-B Kids Day here at Dell Diamond tomorrow. Right-hander Aaron Brooks goes for the Iowa Cubs. No pitcher posted yet for the Round Rock Express. And uh, we're going to have a scoreboard update in the third inning, and we'll tell you about Nick Martinez. Yes. As he has the ball for the Texas Rangers tonight. He was the scheduled starter in Round Rock tonight. They passed him up and uh, moved Tyler Wagner into that spot. Buchanan winds and fires to Guzman. That one almost rode up and in on him. Neck high, ball one. Guzman hit less than four times last night. Two for 13, driving in a run. That's how his Omaha series went. Foul, foul that one off. Guzman put a whipping on Cubs pitchers in Des Moines last week. Seven for 13, a homer and a triple. Six runs batted in. 1-1. One, one. Fouled it back. Count to one and two. Yeah, you do that every series, you'd be MVP. Sooner or later, yeah, there's no <laughs> question about it. I mean, that's, a, that's uh, a an astute series. observation and one that's very, very correct. Shift on for Guzman, the 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball, oh, badly fooled at 72, way out on the front foot. Two straight strikeouts. For Jake Buchanan, who's yet to surrender a base hit. That'll bring on Preston Beck. Beck sat it out last night. What a start. Eighth leading hitter in the league at 377. No homers, four runs batted in. A 922 OPS. That's getting it done. It's good to see, again, one of our younger hitters getting off to such a good start. That's bounced up the middle. Diving stop by Hap. Throw to first, not going to get him. Beck beat it out for an infield single. Give Ian Happ a lot of credit. He went after that ball like a Wolverine. Came up throwing, but no way he was going to get Preston Beck. That's the first hit for the Round Rock Express. And Preston Beck. Good job, Beck. We're hustling down the line all the way. And like you said, Ian Happ makes a great stop. Gets to his feet rather quickly. Just don't think there was enough pace on that ball to be able to get back, who does run very well. He for, really does. For a corner outfield guy. Brett Hayes, the catcher. Two for eight in the just completed Omaha series. Right-handed stick. Buchanan sets, turns and tosses to first. Back, back in. And plenty of time. Preston leads the team with two steals in two tries. Let's see? Which is weird considering that we have Jared Hoying who's been able yes. to steal 20 bases pretty much at will. The pitch in the dirt. Nice smother job by Ali Solis. 3-5-1 Cubs. 0-1-0 oh, oh, Round Rock. Preston Beck just got the first knock for the E-Train. We're broadcasting from Maggiano's booth here at Dell Diamond. Boy, a chilly night like tonight. If you're not here at the ballpark, head to Maggiano's located at the Domain. Yeah, it's warm Great there. Great Italian food. And I'll tell you, when you come away from it, you you're going to look at your significant other or your friend or whoever you took out there. Here's the 1-0. Banged in the left field, a base hit now for Hayes. And Travis has picked a click, has clicked here. The second hit in a row given up by Buchanan brings on Josh Wilson, the shortstop. Yeah. Head into Maggiano's, located at the domain. And you're not going to believe how great it really is, and you'll be back again and again to Maggiano's. I know during the winter when we go there and it'd oh, be cold my. outside, we'd go in there, it'd be nice and toasty. They treated us great. Loved every minute of there it. There is no question. And what a place to do talking baseball, our show in the uh, off season. Fans come in and have a chat with us before every show. It's really fun. Josh Wilson had a base hit last night, drove in a run in his maiden voyage back with the Express. Line drive to left field. Drifting back, now coming back in. Zagunas puts it away. Going to try to double off the runners and back back quickly, as is Hayes. Nice play by Mark Zagunas to range to his right and then to try to, you know, throw that off-balance one-footed throw over down to second base, trying to double off back. 
But it looked like that ball had some top spin and was sinking on him, and he made a great adjustment to the ball. Zagunas looks a little broader than the 6 feet and 205 listed. Yeah, he looks he looks like he could be a fullback. Yes, sir. Drew Robinson hit by a pitch to open the home half of the first. 3 nothing Cubs, two out, and two aboard here in the bottom of the second. The set, a look back at second base. Buchanan deals. Caught on and missed. Strike one to Drew Robinson. What a year he had last year. 257, homered 20 times, stole 16 bases. That's something in the neighborhood of 57, 58 extra base hits. Time called as Solis races out to talk to Buchanan. And again, a young guy who bounced from position to position to position. And not easy to do no. in AAA to do that. And he probably didn't even do that while he was in AA or lower. And just really showed what kind of skill sets he has on the defensive side of the ball. Drew, Drew has three hits in three, all three he has played against the I Cubs this year. Looking for his first one tonight. Left-handed batter, slightly open. Buchanan sets, checks second and deals. A little bloop shot out in the right, base hit. That's going to fall. Here comes Beck. He's going to score, and that makes it a 3-1 Cubs lead over Round Rock as Drew Robinson breaks his bat, gets his fourth hit in as many games against the Cubs, and puts the Express on the board. And got a pitch up in the zone, and Drew Robinson, one of the strongest guys on the team, able to muscle that over the infielder's head. Beck comes around and scores easily. Good read off the bat for Preston Beck. Brett Hayes down to second base. That'll bring on Doug Bernier, who got aboard on an error. A sharply hit ground ball to the third baseman, Tommy Lestella, ricocheted off of Lestella's chest. Two aboard still, two out. 3-1 Cubs, a stretch. Check it, second pitch in the dirt, smothered by Solis. One ball and no strikes. 3-5-1 Cubs, 1-3-0 Round Rock, all three Round Rock base hits here in the second inning. Breeze has all but died down. It had been coming in earlier during batting practice directly from the north. And then it switched to the northeast, and now it's almost non-existent. 1-0 pitch. Popped up down the right field side. What breeze there is will kick it over. Yeah. Into the high end of the seating bowl, way down the right field side. One and one to Doug Bernier. Batters enjoy that wind a lot better than the other one that would blow a ball like that, oh possibly back onto my. the field. And yes. The fielders would catch that in foul territory. That was above the roof line, by the yeah. way, and it would have been a candidate, as you said, to blow back. Fortunately, the wind not out of the south tonight. One ball and one strike. Two glances at second, Buchanan brings it downstairs and the count goes to two and one. Bernier, we mentioned earlier, hit his first 2017 home run in game three against the I-Cubs, leading off the second inning against Mejia, their right-hander. That's over the inner third. Miguel Mejia, two balls, two strikes to Bernier. And I'm telling you, Travis, it was a shot on a line into the very end one of those sky boxes. And that, you get into one of those boxes and look back, it's a long way from home plate. 2-2 two -two pitch, cut on and fouled off. So we could have hung the laundry on it, huh? No question about it. That's beautiful. A frozen rope. <laughs> okay, come on. Oh, that's you got to have one or two more. That's all I got. Two balls and two strikes. A laser beam. A laser beam, like it. So Ali Solis has his arm around Jake Buchanan's shoulder as he marches him back to the mound. Down at second base. Brent Hayes on at first with the RBI single. Drew Robinson. Travis Snyder waits on deck. Round Rock trying to jump back into this game. Finds itself down by two, three, one here in the second inning. Two balls and two strikes. A quick glance at second base, two glances in the pitch. Bounding ball down toward third. La Stella, long throw across, got him. Side retired here in the second inning. A run, 
on three hits and two stranded. We head to the third inning, 3-1 Cubs. I'm going to a new kind of university. I call it the university of getting ahead in my life. It's about graduating with the skills that employers really want. Without digging myself into a financial hole. My university is WGU. WGU Texas. Innovative, online, and surprisingly affordable. With bachelor's and master's degrees in business, IT, education, and nursing. Visit us at texas.wgu.edu. The Iron Cactus has been an Austin original since 1996, with two great locations here in Austin, downtown on 6th Street and north at Stone Lake Boulevard. The Iron Cactus is great for lunch, dinner, and offers the best Sunday brunch for you and your family. And now at the Iron Cactus Stone Lake location, half-priced margaritas on Mondays. Tuesdays, the Iron Cactus Stone Lake location has buy one, get one free enchilada dinners. Come enjoy these great specials at the Iron Cactus Stone Lake location. Visit them at ironcactus.com. When Shakespeare wrote, a rose by any other name would not smell as sweet, he didn't know Higginbotham, because in this case, we're even sweeter with a new name. William Gammon Insurance is now called Higginbotham. Our merger gives your company more coverage options with better pricing, more risk management, and employee benefit services, but the same personal attention from the people you already know and trust. Let's get reacquainted. Visit Higginbotham.net. H-E-B Kids Day, 105 tomorrow. We're on the air on the legendary Coke FM at 1250. Still do not have a pitcher posted for the Round Rock Express. Right-hander Aaron Brooks gets the ball for the Iowa Cubs. Scoring updates brought to you by Caravel Shoes, celebrating 80 years in business. How many stores can say that? Well, not very many. Visit Caravel at their newly remodeled store, 5525 Burnett. That's in Austin and on University Oaks in Round Rock near Ikea. Old-fashioned customer service over 80 years. That's the Caravel motto. And here we go. Zagunas, Bruno, and Rademacher. Five, six, and seven facing Tyler Wagner. Down three to one to the I-Cubs. Right-handed hitting Zagunas. Hitting at 170. Looks at one high, ball one. All right, since we talked about Nick Martinez earlier in the broadcast, the Rangers lead the Royals 1-0 that game in the third, so Nick off to a decent start so far. 1-0 set. Wagner kicks and brings it. Left it upstairs again. Two balls, no strikes. In Tampa Bay, the Rays lead the Astros 6-3. I think the Rays had one giant. Yeah, they've scored two runs in the fifth and four runs in the sixth to take that lead, so the Astros in a little bit of a bind tonight. Two and nothing. Wagner's pitch right over the middle. This time at the belt, strike one. Braves lead the Phillies 1-0 that game in the sixth. Orioles 4-2 over the Red Sox. That game is in the fifth. Indians lead the White Sox in the sixth inning 4-0. Cardinals and Brewers tied at one in the sixth. 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Chased a slider way off the outside. And how about for the Cardinals last night? Adam Wainwright gets the win and hits a homer and has four RBIs. Big night for And you game. say pitchers shouldn't hit. I never said that. I just said we couldn't hit. Two. <laughs> or some two of us balls couldn't. and two strikes. The pitch. Breaking ball. Right down Maine at the knees. Three balls and two strikes. All right. In Arizona, the Diamondbacks lead the Dodgers 3-1. to one. That game just underway in the second inning. In Colorado, the Rockies lead the Giants 3-0. That game now entering the bottom of the third. 3-2 to Zagunas. Low ball four lost him. I think he had him struck out on the yes, pitch previous early. to that, and that is an absolute shame. All right, all other games that I mentioned will be finals. The Cubs 12 to eight over the Reds. Tigers five to four over the Twins. Yankees 11 to five over the Pirates. That's two out of three, or at least, oh, sorry, the Yankees won today. Pirates beat them last night. Junior, just because you cheer for the Cubs, you don't have to throw your fist up in the air every time we say the Cubs' name. Thank you. Ah. Steven Bruno stands in. Hit into a 1-2-3 double play. Bunts it right back toward the catcher. Throw to first. What a throw by Brett Hayes. Holy smokes. There was some anger behind that throw, and he gunned down Bruno, but he'll be given a Credit for a sacrifice, 2-3. My heavens. Did you see the, the left turn that ball That's took That's what I was grass? just getting ready to mention, and what an excellent play 
by Brett Hayes as that ball had a lot of English on it, and he does the bare hand pickup. Risky play, but made it anyway, so good for you, Brett Hayes. Man, this kid. Well, you know, we've always – we've watched him through the years, whether it was with Omaha, whether it was – I think it was in Reno a couple of years. Just really admire him in a lot of different ways. He's a real – you know, you talk about leaders. Yes, sir. Bijan Rademacher looks at a backdoor slider for a strike. Rademacher – Took Wagner deep to open the second inning. They have a runner in scoring position with one out. 3-1 Cubs here in the top half of the third. All right, two more scores. Nationals over the Mets, 3-1. And the A's top the Mariners, 4-3. No balls and one strike. That one misses downstairs, evens it up at 1-1. One one. The A's are mostly the Nashville sounds that started the season in Nashville. Well, they're looking pretty good. They're they're keeping the heat on the Astros right now. Chad Pender is in their starting lineup every other day. I think that I think with that win, yeah, they're going to be 10 and 8. So they're going to be the only other team in the division that's over 500. And the Astros are off to a great start. Cesar Valdez is up with them now. Right. One ball and one strike to pitch. Breaking ball over the outer third again. Strike two. And the the A's are a team. If I'm an, if I'm other teams in the division, I don't want them close. No. Because they have a deal maker of a GM, and he is not afraid to pull a trigger. Now they can't hold on to those guys for long periods of time because no. of their budget uh, constrictions. But, but he's not afraid to do it every three four years. Well, that's right. One and two. I look back at second. Wagner turns it loose again. Bouncing ball down toward first. Guzman steps on the bag. Down to third goes Zagunas. Two out now. That'll bring on Todd Glazeman, who singled and scored back in the second inning. And uh, the young, short, stocky outfielder that they had, too, is back in, in the big leagues with the, the um, Oakland A's. I'll tell you who that is in just a second. Short, stocky guy. Uh, they were just here. No, that was back earlier in the month. It, it's not just here. It's the, it's the last home stand. Nashville? First. Yes, that's who we started with. Jeff Decker. There I you know go. That's who we started with, but it's been. See, you count home stands as one time that you've seen a team play. Right. Well, I get busy. <laughs> I, well, I get a week off. One struck. Between Glazeman. every home stand. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Next pitch. Hammer to center field. Drifting back goes Hoying on back over the shoulder, hauls it in for the out. Side retired, Cubs strand a runner at third here in the third. No runs, no hits, one left. Two and a half in the books from Dell Diamond, 3-1 Iowa. Hey, it's Eric Rains from our friends at Steiner Ranch Steakhouse. Come enjoy the breathtaking views of Lake Travis and the surrounding Do you need to punch a teddy bear? Steiner Ranch Steakhouse <laughs> I'm a, the perfect uh, dining experience uh, for any occasion. I'll tell you what Steiner I'm going to do. I'm going to go the rest of this game without saying Cubs. Rodeo and ranching. Serving top of the line beef and extraordinary do wine it. selection with live entertainment nightly, great happy hours. We can do it. And a wonderful Sunday brunch. Come enjoy a real taste of Texas at the Steiner Ranch Steakhouse. This is the famous Bud Light beer. It's not easy to brew a beer this easy to drink. It takes attention to detail to get something to taste this smooth, which is why Bud Light is tasted by brewmasters every step of the way. Hey. It's a tough job, but for you and your friends, it's worth it. Bud Light. We don't just brew beer. We brew beer for friends. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Just when you thought Golden Chick's crispy golden tenders couldn't get any better, along come three new handcrafted dipping sauces, like their addictively spicy Lata Zing sauce, creamy buttermilk ranch, and homemade honey mustard. Golden Chick calls it an introduction. Some call it evolution. I just call it delicious. Handcrafted chicken and all the goodness that goes with it. That's why. My Golden Rules. Golden Chick. Broadcasting from the live music capital of the world. <laughs> KOKEFM Thorndale, Austin. 98.5 and 99.3 FM and AM 1490 KTAE Austin. This is Coke FM. Jake Buchanan and Iowa lead Round Rock 3-1 into the bottom of the third. It'll be Snyder, Hoying, and Amenis 3-4-5 to face Jake Buchanan. 
And we have some miscreant bullpen guys from the National League affiliate of the Chicago Club. I heard they're from Ottumwa. Here's the first pitch. It's up and away, ball one. <laughs> yeah. And they will be referred to as teddy bears. 1-0 pitch right there at the knees to Snyder. Travis hit a fly ball to center field his first time. I cannot take full credit for that. One ball and one strike. Well, I can tell you who helped us with it. Yes, please do. Let's give them all the credit we can. 1-1. One, one. Aimed to the outside, Mrs. Lowe, Eric Kruger. Our yes, our producer. Producer. Who is... Uh, has about as sharp a wit as anybody around. <laughs> no doubt. Two balls and one strike. The pitch banged in the right center field. Back it goes. Racing back. Back goes Rademacher. That's in the bullpen and gone. Holy smokes. First home run in 2017 for Travis Snyder. A shot of about 400 feet. RBI number six narrows the gap to three to two Iowa. Travis Snyder for the first time in 17. Take a bow. And he absolutely smoked that ball. And again, maybe a little bit of wind aiding as the wind is kind of blowing out in that general direction, but that ball was absolutely hammered. Good job, Travis Snyder. That'll bring on Jared Hoying who grounded the first unassisted his first time. Buchanan winds, kicks, and brings it over the inside edge. Ball, of, call it a strike. Speaking of balls getting hammered, how about Joey Gallo last night? Two home runs. And the second one, here's the 0 1 pitch. A better pitch than the one called a strike. Count to one and one. What did that end up? 462 feet or something? Yeah, uh, some, by some popcorn cart over the lower section. Up in there, 400. Yeah, he crushed it. One and one pitch sails outside. Two balls, one strike. And from what I understand, watching on MLB tonight, that it was the longest and fastest home run of the year. 2 1 delivery. Line fouled on the left field side. Hoying going the opposite direction and just sliced it right into a big yeah, crowd. And nobody it's, saw it coming. Well, that's okay. They're lined up for beer and their minds are that's elsewhere. Right. They'll be able to drown their pains. 2-2. Two, two. Just told it was 116 miles an hour off That's Joey Gallobat. Coming out quickly. Here's the 2-2. Two, two. Breaking ball floats up and away. Three balls, two strikes. They had him at 114 on that first home run he oh. hit in Memphis. That hit the uh, oh, that's right. on the, the one fourth, last year. Uh, fourth level of those condos there beyond the right center field bullpen payoff. Way up and out. Ball four lost him. First walk issued by Jake Buchanan. And that'll bring on A.J. Amenez, who struck out to finish off the first. Three to Iowa. As we play here in the third. Ottumwa Teddy Bears, huh? The Ottumwa Teddy Bears for the rest of this series. And again, thanks to uh, Radar Eric O'Reilly. Kruger, Radar yes. O'Reilly and MASH, which was and still is one of the all-time, all-time great shows. Sort of first, not in time. An extra credit for who played the actor of Radar O'Reilly. Who was uh, a U.S. representative for a while, I believe. Really? I think so. From Iowa? Yes. Gary, uh, that pitch over the outside corner for a strike. It's Gary Berghoff. Gary Berghoff. Yep. I, I think so. You and look, he was also in the that movie. He, he sure was. He was one of, I think, two characters that were in the movie. He wasn't and in Radar, the though, was he? I in the believe movie? he was. Radar. In the movie. Okay. Fred Grady, gopher from the Love Boat, was the congressman from Iowa. Okay. So, okay. Fred Grady. Okay. Somehow I thought Berghoff had done that. But thank you, Eric. You've saved us again from... We kept us being mere mortals instead of asinine imbeciles. <laughs> no balls in one strike. <laughs> That's about as much as we can stretch that one. That's popped up first base side. Over in the foul ground. 
Caratini. We'll watch that one sail away, and that little breeze did kick it away. Yes, it did. Again, Victor Express Caratini. caught a break right there. A.J. Jimenez will get another shot. Travis and I just manage on most nights to grease the skids enough to go over unless we're bailed out by guys like Mr. Kruger. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Just tells me he's on that Google machine. I'm or telling he's you, he's got a wealth of knowledge. He's got first. Of, well, I I know him well enough to know he has a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. No balls and two strikes. Outfield well around toward right. Three two. Round Rock trails Iowa. That's over the outside edge. Strike three. Ooh. So the third strikeout for Buchanan, more or less a gift, brings on Ronald Guzman, who was the second Buchanan victim that let off the second inning. Let's see if Ronald can get into one here. 3-2, Atumwa. <laughs> well, it's all in Iowa, right? It is all in Iowa. I mean, they represent Iowa, right? That's what they say. Here's the pitch. Backdoor slider misses low and outside. <laughs> one and nothing to Guzman. 3-33, two homers, 10 runs batted in. Double play depth, Iowa infield. Slight bend in the knees. The pitch, bouncing ball ripped it foul. Brian Pearson does one step to get out of the way of it. Yeah, that was kind of just a, nah, I don't want to mess with that ball. Well, here. Third base coaches all usually make some kind of attempt unless it's a rocket. First base coach is not so much. I wonder why that is. Well, maybe good sense. I don't know. Yeah, 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 probably so. One and one. Outside target. Toss to first. Back in with a head first dive. Safely goes Hoying. Actually, I have a pretty good idea why. I'm just looking at it. So Pearson obviously has to that watch noise. the pitcher. And is watching the base runner or the third baseman. Third base coach is usually watching the batter all the way. And so he's facing the batter as if he's in fielding position. Next pitch, way outside. The catcher for Iowa, Ali Solis, had set up outside, but the pitch was way further out than even Ali thought it would be. Two and one to Guzman. The set, the Buchanan pitch, dives down and in. Did he go? Oh, he rang him up on that. And from that position. What? That's what I'm saying. This is one of the downfalls of having a three-man crew. We lose the third base umpire with a runner on base. Or with a, just at least with a runner on, on first. It makes it really difficult. Two balls and two strikes. Where is this noise coming from? What noise are you talking about, Kathy? Don't you hear it in your headsets? I hear nothing. Cap, he's got a ghost. <laughs> no, he doesn't. What kind of noise? Is it a thumping or yes. a ringing? Yep. It's not like you scratch it on your pen usually. That that, that noise, one. yeah. 2-2. <laughs> two, two. Rip down toward first in the right field. Base hit. Hoying makes a turn at second. He's headed to third. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. And runners at the corners as Guzman rips a single to right. And Round Rock with a tying run on a third. One out here in the third inning. And again, Jared Hoyn showed that he's an excellent base runner, knew where the right fielder was, knew that he had to go over to get that ball, and with his speed, he was going to make third easy. Love watching base runners go first to third. It's probably the most exciting part of watching base runners. When Hoying stretches out those long legs, he can really get them going. Yes, he can. Here's Preston Beck, who's one for one, scored Round Rock's first run back in the second inning. 3-2 Iowa here in the third. Pitch over the outside edge for a strike. I wonder if it's over there on the wall next to us, and they're just tapping. It's Morse code. One strike to count. <laughs> now I hear it, now that you, you explained what it was. Inside target. Uh, when Jack knifes him, evens it up at one and one. 
You know, you're you're like Radar O'Reilly. You're hearing things that other people just don't hear until it's upon them. This okay. is working. This is working. <laughs> one and one to Beck. 389 batter. No homers and four runs batted in. Buchanan sets. Runners at the corners. One out here in the third. That one down and away. Two and one. Back outside the batter's box, adjusting the gloves. Now stands back in. Straight up outfield. The set, the pitch, hooked it inside. Three and one. Three balls and one strike. <laughs> the set at 3-1, the pitch. Ripped into right field again. That'll score Hoang. We're tied at three apiece. Beck comes through with his second base hit. And we're all tied up at three. And that kid can hit. He can hit. Looks like we're going to have a mound visit from the pitching coach, Rod Nichols. Yeah, yeah, I don't think, I think this inning sort of accidentally caught up to Buchanan. He was in pretty good control. Yeah, he gave up the, you know, the leadoff homer to Snyder, but then walking Jared Hoying, but gets the strike out of Jimenez, but then just kind of really just pitching behind in the count. And for someone that knows Jake, when he works behind in the count, it's usually not good. He doesn't have that overpowering fastball. And so he really has to be a guy that relies on location. And right now it just seems like today and in his past couple outings, he's missing locations, which is not how Jake usually operates. So two runs are in. We're tied. And that will bring on Brent Hayes, who's single behind the Beck single back in the second inning. Game knotted at three. Ronald Guzman down at second, on at first. Preston Beck, still only one out. Buchanan checks second. Line drive, left field, back it goes. Racing back, back goes the Gunas. Back, back to the wall, hauls it in for the out. Brett Hayes swung under it just a little bit. Ball kept drifting toward left center field. Oh, that was close. Two that, out now for Zach uh, for uh, Josh Wilson. And just to let you know, had the wind been the other way, but just thinking last night when it was warm, that ball would have been way out of here as that ball was well struck. But the wind just blowing from left to right tonight knocked it down. So out in front of home plate comes Ali Solis. You know, that's a situation where the catcher, he's probably going to say, hey, Jake, how do way to use the whole field? Good job. Interesting little move, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what that was for. I-'m not exactly sure. Unless Solis there was comes a cross-up on that last pitch. I think, I'll bet you that's what it was. And because it got put in play, the catcher, you didn't see anything really awkward from the catcher in trying to catch that ball. So Wilson up, has a runner in scoring position. The go-ahead run down at second base, Guzman back on at first. The pitch to Josh, down and away, ball one. Wilson lined to left. Back in the second inning, had an RBI sacrifice fly last night. Going one for three. Very chilly evening here at Dell Diamond. A 3-3 ball game here in the bottom of the third, the pitch. Tried a backup slider and just sat there and spun. And, boy, Buchanan caught a break there that Josh didn't slap that one into left. You can see the frustration, too, in Jake Buchanan missing his spots. Two balls and no strikes. A look back at second, the pitch. 
Over the inside edge, strike one to Wilson. Zach Roscup, the lefty, loosing in the Iowa Cubs bullpen. Breeze has all but died down now. Guzman, a big lead at second. Caught on and missed. Pitch that just disappeared as it approached home plate. Wilson swinging above it. Two and two. The set again by Buchanan. An outside target to pitch. Breaking ball just got a piece of the end of the bat on it and fouled it off. Count remains at two and two. Three six and zero Express. Three five and one Iowa. Shoulder high set, a check of second, the pitch by Buchanan. Rolled it right off the end of the bat. Out almost to the I-Cubs. I said Cubs, on deck area. Shame. I knew I couldn't get through a whole ball game. <laughs> I would have messed it up too. Two balls and two strikes. Runners at first and second. Buchanan. Trying to hold this at a tie, the pitch. Below the knees. Boy, that was close, three and two. We have seen hitters this year rung up on pitches at that particular location. And if I'm a pitcher, I'm wanting that location. So now danger for Jake Buchanan here as both of the runners are going to be on the move. Single could score two depending on how far it goes. Yeah, hey, pitch right there, strike three, and Josh knew it. So, that's the fourth punch out for Jake Buchanan. Leaves a go-ahead run in scoring position. Two runs on a total of three base hits and two left. We head to the fourth. Travis takes you through the fourth and the fifth. 3-3 three, three ball game, Round Rock in Iowa. Today at Whataburger, we're picking the Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. Yes, yeah, we're and it's back. We got three chicken strips, two slices of Monterey Jack cheese, topped with Whataburger's own buffalo sauce, a little bit of buttermilk ranch, all between a toasted bun. Chicken sandwich on its own is good. Chicken sandwich with buffalo sauce is fantastic. It really wakes up the chicken sandwich. It's crunchy and then spicy and then it's cool. Your mouth is exploding with flavor. Whataburger's Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. It's back and it's only here for a limited time. Whether it's your first home or your fifth one, the mortgage experts at University Federal Credit Union are here to help you make the best mortgage decision. As the number one mortgage lender in the Austin area, UFCU provides the tools, trusted guidance, and financing options you need for a more affordable mortgage. Do what over 2,500 members did in 2016. Make UFCU your mortgage loan source. Visit us at ufcu.org or call 512-997-HOME. NMLS 441215, Equal Opportunity Lender. Want to go somewhere really fascinating? Why not visit your own country? Book a trip on Amtrak. Frame-worthy views come standard with every ticket. So does extra legroom. Plus, you can recharge your phone and yourself. Right now on the Texas Eagle, buy one regular adult fare and get a companion fare free with code V509. Book now for travel through May 15th. Available only on Amtrak.com and TexasEagle.com. Amtrak, see where the train can take you. Restrictions apply. Tonight's fourth inning brought to you by the official chip of minor league baseball, Uncle Ray's Chips, made Uncle Ray's away since 1965. Of course, they have the regular flavor. They also have some really great ones. Pepperoni pizza, maple bacon, cheesy garlic bread, and mesquite barbecue. Uncle Ray's Chips and the Uncle Ray's aficionado of the booth, Travis Triscoll, takes you through the fourth and the fifth. Thank you, Mike. And leading off for the... Let's see, the Atumwa Teddy Bears will be the catcher, Ali Solis. First pitch will be taken for a strike. Uh, Solis is 0 for 1 on the day, and he's going to be followed by a leadoff batter, Chesney Young and Tommy LaStella. Tyler Wagner working out of the stretch. Delivers the ball. Ball is going to be smoked over to right center. Right fielder Preston Beck will cut it off and keep that ball to a single. 
that pitch is up in the zone, and Ali Solis does a nice job of just going with it and hitting that ball hard. We talk about this every single time. When you get a lead or, or tie the ball game, yep. you really got to have a shutdown inning. Yeah, every, anytime your offense scores, it's, it's imperative that the pitcher has a sense of urgency to try to put up a zero because you want to maintain that momentum. So now back to the top of the order. Chesney Young will be up to bat. Don't look for him to bunt right here. He'll take the first pitch over for a strike. Chesney Young in the right-handed batter's box. Ali Solis, the catcher, doesn't run particularly well, so not looking for any motion as the defense will be in double play depth. Here's the 0-1. In tight, ball one. Good-looking fastball, 90 miles an hour from Wagner. Moving the hitter's feet. Hopefully creating a little bit of discomfort. Wagner comes set. Swung on. Two hops to the third baseman, Robinson, and unable to get it out of his glove as it looked like he was trying to go for the second or the first out over at second base. Unable to make the play, and that will go down as E5. So now the Ottumwa Teddy Bears have two Base runners on, runners on first, and runners on second. And it's going to bring up Tommy Lestella. Tommy Lestella is one for one on the day. Drew a walk, his last plate appearance. So he's off to a killer start here in AAA, batting 1,000 for the year. He's actually just one for one as this is his first game down from the, the big club. Killer start. Hey, he's the best hitter in the league right now. First pitch to Lestella is over for a strike. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Just trying to describe the You know what, it's so good action. you need to take the day off tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Umpire calls time. Or the catcher called time. Yeah, he pointed it. They're, they're working on it. their, get, making sure they get their signal straight. And again, I can almost guarantee the time of Lestella will not be bunting in this situation. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Just misses the outside corner for ball one. Good looking pitch. But just off the edge. So Lestella, kind of a really relaxed batting stance. Waits for the pitcher to move before he even picks the bat up off his shoulder. And that pitch will be in too tight for ball two. For me, it seems like that would be a little bit hard to get it going, but each hitter has their own little timing mechanism that makes them unique. And again, if he's been in the big leagues, he's obviously doing something right. Here comes the 2-1 pitch. Wagner delivers. Outside, ball three. So after getting strike one, Wagner is throwing three straight balls and has really put himself in a hole here with two runners on. Again, runners on first and second. Ali Solis at second. Chesney Young at first. Hopefully Solis is a, being a base clogger. 3-1 pitch. Swung on a miss. Listella comes out of his shoes. He totally lost his balance there and ended up spun around, almost looking at the visitor dugout. So that will make the count full. See if manager Marty Peavy wants to put him on the move. He does not. Mastella punches that ball to left field. That ball's going to land in front of Travis Snyder, and the base runners are all going to move up one base. So Mastella sticks his tail out towards the visitor's dugout, swings one-handed, just catches it off the end, and hits that into shallow left field. Golly. Uh, this is – you simply cannot play the game this way. Uh, it, it, it's tough. It's tough. You, you, again, we score those two runs, and now we got bases loaded, no outs for the Otomo Teddy Bears. And the batter's going to be Ian Hatt, the second baseman. He's one for one on the day with an RBI. And the RBI single was a ball hit pretty well. He'll take the first pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Nice changeup from Tyler Wagner. So looking at the infield, 
Shortstop Josh Wilson will be very close to the second base bag. Drew Robinson about 15, 20 feet off the line. Next pitch swung on and missed. Puts the count at 0-2. Second baseman and first baseman in relatively normal positions. Looking at Doug Vernier, he's doing a little bit of a dance, trying to stay loose on this chilly night. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball tapped in front of the mount or in front of the plate, but foul. And we'll do the 0-2 count again. Last time we had bases loaded. Tyler Wagner able to get a chopper in front of the mound, able to flip it to the catcher, Brett Hayes, for a double inning ending double play. And that was in the first off the bat of Steven Bruno. Little one, two, three double play would come in handy here. It's a long look in by Wagner. He comes set. And here's the 0-2. Breaking ball fouled off again. Ian Happ doing a nice job of fouling off some tough pitches. The good thing is we're still in the 0-2 hole, so Wagner has a little bit of room to work. This might be the time to maybe expand the zone just a little bit to see if you can get Ian Happ to chase a pitch just a little bit out of the zone. It's a dangerous cat to have up in this situation. Oh, no doubt. I'm not a big fan of young hitters in big RBI situations. They get very aggressive. 0-2 pitch. Down and out for ball one. Well, he's the second leading home run hitter in the league with seven. Has 12 runs batted in, including one tonight. Run producer. Well, that's why he's hitting third, too. Which makes good sense. But anybody thinking he's taking Chris Bryant's spot, nope. No. <laughs> Here's the one, two. Upstairs, ball two. Just missing the top of the strike zone. Probably could have gone either way. So now the count's going to be two and two. Again, bases loaded here for the Otomo Teddy Bears in this tie ball game here in the top of the fourth. Wagner looks back at second and delivers. Breaking ball tapped foul again. Ian Happ doing a nice job of fouling some tough pitches off. I'm pretty sure right here, and what I would be thinking in this situation is I've, I got him reaching. Now I need to find a way to go hard in. Got to be on the plate because I don't want to go to 3-2 and see if I can force some soft contact on a pitch in. Breaking ball bounces out of the catcher's mitt and will be, go for ball three. All runners hold. Ali Solis on third. Thought about coming home and then thought better of it and then has to put up his hands as if he was base coaching the runner at second, who happens to be Chesney Young. So Solis at third, Young at second, Bastella at first, 3-2 count to the batter, Ian Happ, here in the top of the fourth. Looking at the board, the Rangers and the Royals tied now in the top of the sixth, so Nick Martinez doing a fine job tonight. Next pitch is swung on and missed, and we finally win the battle. Great pitch from Tyler Wagner. Best pitch of the night, in my opinion, and one that couldn't have come at a better spot. You allow one run to score here, and you're going to open up the gates for these guys. I, I really believe it, and now, he get, and now we have an opportunity to get the double play to get out of the inning if we can make one good pitch. We're going to have a pitching mound visit from the pitching coach, Greg Hibbard. And I think right here, he's just kind of giving him a breather and probably telling him, hey, that was a great job right there. You just, you threw some tough pitches, batter fouled a bunch of them off. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a breather. Maybe find out what their uh, strategy is here for the batter now, the first baseman, Victor Caratini. He's one for two on the day with an RBI. Had an RBI double back in the first inning to start the scoring for the Ottumwa. Teddy Bears. I think the, we better go back to calling them. You the think? Pubs. Yeah. We can't do it for just the rest half of the inning? Yeah, go ahead and do the half. <laughs> of it. Keep doing it. Here's the first pitch. Ball's going to be smoked into right field. One run will score. 
and all the runners will just move up one base, and that's going to be an RBI single off the bat of Vic Caratini. So he's going to be two for three with two RBIs on the night. It's going to bring up Mark Zagunas, who is 0 for 0 on the day. He has walked and been hit by a pitch. So the score now, 4 to 3. Yeah, I guess we'll go to iCubs since they've kind of ruined our karma. <laughs> He's more or less. Yeah. And that's so, sort of where I was going with that anyway. I, so 4 to 3 iCubs. We're, we're not playing in small town Iowa anymore. Here's our first pitch to Zagunas. Breaking ball off the outside edge. Check swing. The umpire throws the hands down and says, no, he did not go. So, again, still bases loaded, one out. Should be a good double play situation. Zagunas is a left fielder. Probably doesn't run terrible, but still probably a good double play candidate. Pitch in too tight for ball two. Yeah, this is where where pitchers have to think right here. What is what what am I trying to do, and what is my best pitch to get it? And if I got a good sinker, this is where I want to pitch at the bottom of the zone, force that weak contact, see if I can get the ground ball. Wagner delivers. Ball's high drive to left field. That ball is up. That ball is back. Travis Snyder gives chase and will run into the wall, and that will clear the fences and clear the bases. That will be a grand slam for Mark Zagunas. That'll be his second home run and RBIs 8, 9, 10, and 11. Well, you just sort of could see this coming 